So let's end the year with some funny stories about people trying to sell their business. Hey there everyone, it's uh, David Barnett from davidcbarnett.com, the blog site, YouTube channel, SoundCloud and iTunes podcast where I talk about buying, selling, financing and managing small businesses based almost entirely off of questions that you guys submit. This is the special year-end episode because it's the last business day of 2017. And I put up a video a couple weeks ago about um, uh, a guy who had wrote to me, we just call him Jay, who had had some bad luck in buying a business. He, he basically made a bad deal for himself. But I wanted to finish up with some equally sad stories about people trying to sell their businesses and, and some that are not so sad, but maybe a little bit funny. Um, but it highlights why if you own a business and you, and you want to sell, you really do need to get some help and get some good advice from people who can, who can do a good job helping you achieve your goal. So the very first one, I have a client who I helped uh, earlier this year buy a restaurant and it's in a smaller community and uh, things are going really well for him and the restaurant is quite successful. And one of the delivery men that brings him food uh, heard that his direct competitor just down the road uh, who has almost the same menu, same style of food, goes after the same clientele. Um, he heard from the food delivery guy that that other guy was for sale. So he called up his competitor and introduced himself and said, hey, uh, I heard your business was for sale. And his competitor said, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it listed for sale. If you want to know anything about it, uh, call my real estate agent. So my client who just bought the business called the real estate agent and said, hey, I was interested in knowing about this business uh, here in the small town. And the realtor said, oh, okay, what's your email address? I'll email you over all of his financial statements and we have a property appraisal and a whole bunch of other documentation. So uh, just like that, my client who you know just bought this business in this small town has full disclosure and information about his direct competitor, including financial statements, performance, the value of his building, the taxes he pays, everything, and uh, was never asked to sign an NDA. No one ever thought that maybe giving information to a competitor was a bad idea. And so what my client's been able to do is use this information to benchmark himself. He now knows where he needs to work on the business and where the other guy is better. He knows maybe how to be more competitive and uh, he can use that information uh, to become more successful in his market. And it just goes to highlight that the other guy um, has absolutely no idea what he's doing and uh, didn't engage the right kind of intermediary who was going to be able to help him guard confidentiality and protect his valuable personal information. So what's now going to happen is my client, you know, maybe he'll buy the other business. Who knows? Maybe he'll just use the information he's gleaned to become a stronger competitor, win clients from the other guy, and ultimately that other guy's business is going to suffer. So that's just one example um, that a viewer who became a client ended up calling me and telling me this story. He thought it was hilarious. And while I agree from his point of view, it is pretty funny. From the point of view of the other guy trying to sell his business, it's it's a terrible shame. And this guy's been damaged by his ignorance, which of course isn't going to happen to you because you watch this channel, right? Okay, so the next one was I got contacted by a guy in Toronto who started a business a year and a half ago and uh, decided he would put an ad up on a classified website. Uh, it's called Kijiji. Uh, just advertising the fact that he had a business which makes $20,000 a month and he wanted to sell it for $200,000. And he got a whole bunch of inquiries and one guy who says he's really serious. And so this business owner went looking for help and advice on how to um, sell a business and, and found me. So he calls me up and he says, yeah, I've got this business. I make about 20 grand a month and I put an ad on Kijiji and I said, okay. I said, read me the ad. And he said, well, it goes like this. It says, small business, which makes 20000 a month for sale, asking $200,000. And I said, great. What is your definition of makes? And so, so here's the problem, you see. The guy has revenue of $20,000 a month. And he uses the word makes to mean that this is the amount of money coming in. But, of course, in my mind, making money is a profit. And so anyone who's advertising that they have a profit of $20,000 a month and they're asking $200,000 for the business, of course, you're going to get tons of inquiries, right? And what I had to explain to this guy, you know, and after a little bit of digging, we learned that his $20,000 of revenue leads him to earn 
uh, between three and four thousand dollars a month for himself, which is just fantastic for a guy who's been in business for 18 months. I mean, he's just got underway and he's making himself money, which is a fantastic achievement. But no one is going to pay two hundred thousand dollars for a business that earns between you know three and four thousand dollars a month for the guy who owns it because you know it doesn't even create enough cash flow to compensate the owner for the real value of his time. This guy left a professional career where he was earning like 80 grand and he's working in the same field. So um, yeah, I had to explain to him that that no deal was ever going to close and it all had to come down to the verbiage and the wording that he was using. And so, uh, you know, he's gonna keep working on his business, but there was a lot of excitement. There were a lot of emotions going up and down, a lot of, you know, dreaming about what I'm gonna buy when I get this $200,000 check. Anyway, got that guy set straight. Uh, third one was from a guy um, who contacted me because he had been trying to sell his business for three years and nobody would give him what he considered was a reasonable offer. So I asked him you know, some questions about his business and uh, he engaged me for a bit of consulting work to look at his business and come up with a, with a value. And so I came up with a value for his business um, and he hadn't shared with me the other value that he had um, and well, I came up with something that was about 40% of what the other value was. And what had happened is this guy had gone to uh, someone with an accounting background who had taken a couple of business valuation courses and they had applied something called the discounted future cash flow method or DCF method. And they had used rates of return and a methodology that was more in line with what I would call a middle market business. So a business that has sales between 30 and $50 million a year. And they had applied this methodology to a business that had sales just under $1 million a year. And what always happens when these mid market valuation methodologies are applied to small business is they lead to figures that are simply too high. And one of the biggest reasons why that happens is in the mid market, typically ownership and management may not be the same people. So some people own a business and they've got all these managers working there. And if they sell the company to someone else, that buyer gets the advantage of keeping a lot of the management staff in place. They, they carry on with the company. And so track record and future earnings are something that's really important to an investor at that level because they want, you know, typically these are investors. They go around buying investments and things, and maybe they're managing money for other people, for example, and they want to know that they're placing the money somewhere where it's going to grow into the future. Small business buyers have a completely different mentality. They're making an investment, but they're also most of the time buying themselves a job because a small business buyer is going to take over that management role. And so to the small business buyer, future prospects, growth rates, all that kind of stuff looking forward is not really that important because to them, they're the ones that have to deliver the leadership guidance and management in order to achieve those future results, which means the results belong to them, right? They don't want to pay the seller for that. And so in the world of small businesses, we use other methodologies where we compare one business to another. And so this guy was steadfastly focused on the fact that this other professional had told him his business was worth a certain amount of money. And he would he was arguing with me. He was saying, no, no, David, you're wrong. It's not worth that. It's worth this. It's worth this. I just need to figure out how to get somebody to agree that my piece of paper is correct. And then I, you know, so I basically I asked him, so what you're looking for for me is a series of words when strung, to, strung together in a correct order will lead someone to do what you want, which is to purchase your business for this number that you've been given. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, that's not a sales pitch. That's a magic spell. When you utter you know, things in the right order and magically you get a result. So I wasn't able to help that guy. But one of the things I did say to him is I said, look, take your deal to a banker, uh, change the name on the top of the sheet and go to a commercial banker and say, I'm going to buy this business and this is the price of the business and I need you to finance it for me and just get their feedback. Because if you won't believe me and you won't believe the fact that nobody's making any offers on your business, at least go to a bank and listen to why they wouldn't lend money to someone to buy this business under these circumstances. So those are three little stories of things that have happened in the last little while. 
uh, in dealing with people who own businesses that are trying to sell them. I work with people all over the place that are trying to sell businesses, helping to, them to get proper expectations, helping to inform them of the process, helping to give them guidance so that they can either hire the right professional locally or do it themselves with my help. And I work with people all over the place. I've got clients right now in Florida, New Jersey, Texas, California, Toronto, and Alberta, all over the place. Um, and for those of you who own a business who may want to sell it one day, I've got a special deal which is going to be going on until the end of January. If you buy my exit planning course, which is called How to Get Out of My Business, and my systems course, which is called Build a Business That People Will Want to Buy, you buy them both, I'll give you a free ticket to my May 29th seminar in Toronto, which is going to be happening out near Pearson Airport. And if you're nowhere near Toronto, I'll give you a virtual ticket so you'll get the PDFs and a recording of the session so you'll still be able to enjoy what happens in that workshop. So that's a special deal. You buy both of those online courses and I'll give you either a real or a virtual seat on May 29th in Toronto. And all you have to do is email me once you buy those two courses and I'll get you signed up. Anyway, thank you so much. Don't forget, go to davidcbarnett.com. Um, and um, learn from hundreds of blog posts and hundreds of videos, all based on questions that people have submitted just like you. And with that, I'll wish you all a happy new year. Please be safe. We'll see you in 2018. And if there's anything you want to know about buying, selling, managing, or financing a business, um, just send me a question.